Hey everybody, how are you doing? This is going to be the first part in a series of videos where I show you how to build a salamander paludarium. This is specifically going to be the, house, the new housing for my pseudo triton ruber, which is a northern red salamander. Um, originally, I had posted this in an earlier video, I have a northern red salamander that is currently in a 40 gallon long breeder that really wasn't designed for him. It's a cool setup, but it's just way too hard to find him in there to kind of tear everything up uh, in order just to feed him. And I'm sick of doing that. So I wanted to build something a little more appropriate. And so what I got here, as you can see, is a 20 gallon tall um, glass aquarium, non-tempered, I already checked because I do uh, external drilling for the plumbing. So I have bulkheads in all my uh, paludariums because I absolutely hate having to get in there and mess everything up just to change the filter or adjust something. So I like having all that, all the mechanical stuff on the outside. And this first part here is just essentially showing you some of the things that you're gonna need. Um, you know, clearly you're gonna need an aquarium. Um, there's just some hardscape elements here. There's rocks and driftwood, things like that, and um, some gravel over there in a, in a bucket. But, um, you know, I build my own lid, so you have the uh, trim pieces, corners, and um, carbon, fiber, carbon fiber mesh there for the lids hacksaws to, to cut it. Um, you know, you've got your expanding foam and you've got your silicone, um, you know, and then you've got, uh, you know, you're gonna need a power drill, a diamond bit hole saw to cut through the glass, which you can see there. Um, that's something that, you know, is, is important um, when you're cutting your glass. Um, and then I have all my plumbing pieces here uh, that I'll show you a closer look. And in the background, I have a crate light diffuser, which is just crisscross plastic, it's, it's good for frame and redistributing weight um, and also building structure. Some people use foam. I've also used um, insulation pieces in the past, which is fine too. Uh, I just have, happen to have a lot of this stuff on hand right now. I bought sheets of this stuff from Home Depot a while back. So I plan on using it to help build the structure for this. So here I am making the lid uh, for, the, for the tank with the screen and the frame. Hey everyone. Uh, so what I wanted to do now, now we've made the lid for the tank, that was the first step, it fits great. Um, and so the next thing I want to do is I'm going to be drilling through the glass. So which, I actually uh, lost the footage of drilling through the glass, but don't worry, it was boring do. anyway. Um, I have diamond bit hole sauce that I got off Amazon, like 20 bucks. It has a bunch of different sizes, up from a quarter inch to about two inches. So uh, a, lot of, a, a lot of sizes, it's great. Um, but I gotta tell you, you gotta be really careful when you drill through the glass. I've actually never broken a tank, but um, I have broken other glass and cracked glass uh, for other projects I was doing using this, uh, the drill bits. Uh, and you see this on other videos, people, people are like drilling through and they're saying it takes a couple minutes. I don't know, maybe, maybe I just don't have as <laughs> great of a uh, diamond bit um, hole saw set, but it takes me a while. I'm pretty careful, especially in like, 20, 40 gallon, 20 gallon to 40 gallon tanks, um, even 10 gallon, 10 gallon tanks are even worse. The thinner the glass, the easier it cracks. So um, I'm gonna show you how I do that. I use duck seal putty uh, on the outside, although I don't really think you necessarily need that. I just have it um, for other plumbing stuff. So um, I use that on the outside so water doesn't get out. Um, I use water just to keep it the, the, um, the bit cool um, as it's drilling. And uh, that's it, just some duct tape so when the piece of glass doesn't fall through and crack something else. Um, and when you do that, um, when you drill the hole, the next thing you do is uh, you put these bulkheads on. This is a half inch bulkhead and it's threaded on both sides. There's a rubber gasket here, you can see, and then on the inside it's also threaded. So it's a double threaded, I get these from Lifeguard Aquatics um, on Amazon, pretty cheap, four or five bucks, something like that. Uh, so, let's say that this strainer is the one that's my intake, it's sucking in the water. This is my low profile strainer that I also got from Lifeguard Aquatics. It's up for a half an inch, it just simply screws right in like that. So really easy, and then the uh, barb hose connector, the 90 degree barb hose connector is also threaded, and that actually just threads right on to uh, the outside of the bulkhead, and then your vinyl hose would go here. So that's kind of how that whole thing works. Um, and this gasket essentially creates a seal around the glass. Um, I also use plumber's tape um, when I put um, the, uh, the barb hose connector in just to make that seal extra tight in case. Um, and I mean, if it does leak, worse comes worse, you can always take it out and use uh, their seal cement um, from Odie's that I've used before. Um, I use that with slip connectors though, not normally not threads, threaded things. 
Um, but again, anyways, I'm going to show you a time lapse sorry. just because it takes a while how to drill the holes. So see you then. What's up, everybody? So this is the next step in the salamander paludarium. Uh, to quickly recap what we've already done is we have built the DIY lid um, using uh, carbon fiber um, window screen uh, mesh and then also using the corners and the frame, um, cutting that down to size. Uh, I checked this fits into the tank perfectly on top. So we're done with that step. Um, we've also drilled the holes in the glass for the bulkheads. So uh, the next step is to essentially build a skeleton of a frame um, to be able to support the hardscape. I like to use a lot of rocks and, and wood and things like that that are foamed in. And I like to use this A-Crate light diffuser uh, to um, the foam I find in um, the silicone adhere to this, um, stick to this a lot uh, better than other things. But you can also, I've also used um, uh, styrofoam before. I've used um, insulation, uh, things like that. You can also use that as long as it's safe for, for whatever you're having in there. Um, you know, so do that research up front. Um, but this is going to be pretty simple. Basically, I'm just going to be measuring uh, the bottom of the tank to put a piece on the bottom so the weight from all the rocks will be evenly distributed. I'm also going to build, uh, measure this, the, through the back of the tank and the two sides because I like to have most of my tanks with, um, with sides as well. Um, so it's kind of like three backgrounds. Um, and just the glass open in the front. So really, uh, you'll just need some wire snippers and some, um, and some silicone uh, to do this part, and I will show you in time-lapse how I do it. So let's get to it. Making the frame. Hey, everybody. So um, as you can see, we got the A-Crate light diffuser cut, and this is kind of how it looks. It's not siliconed in yet, but as you can see, there's two sides. Kind of see that there, Oops. and then you've got the background and the ground. And then um, one other thing that I'd note is that you can also see here where we I cut around um, the bulkheads. I put the bulkheads in to make sure they fit, and you can kind of see how that, um, you know, what that looks like here. Just kind of trim around and then you do it on the bottom too. And then so now when I silicone it in, I'm gonna leave the bulkheads in while I silicone it in just to make sure that nothing's touching. Um, and so, yeah, that's it. You know, took me like 15, 20 minutes, but there you go. Uh, on to the next step of silicone. Okay, so to this point, we have siliconed in and I did not um, tape this, but I siliconed in the pieces uh, for the frames you can see here um, and I cut around where the bulkheads are so again this frame is going to support the hardscape which will consist of wood like driftwood rocks things like that um, and I also cut out another space for the uh, the intake as well so as you can see this is where I'd also uh, siliconed in a couple um, pieces of this uh, egg crate for uh, little ledges and things like that. Um, I'm also going to probably use this. I, I don't know yet. I built this out of egg crate. Um, it would kind of sit in here like this. It looks stupid right now, but um, I would, you know, foam around it um, and also use rocks and things so I could put some plants in it. Uh, so they don't get saturated, but I don't know yet. It kind of takes up a lot of space. So, um, you know, and I've got some uh, carbon fiber, um, or not carbon fiber, I have some uh, some mesh material around the outside um, so plants can grow on it, like moss and things like that, if, if any of it's exposed. But um, right now what I'm gonna do is, I actually just got this in the mail. Um, this was like 10 bucks on Amazon. These are male tees. This is a half inch. And it screws in to the bulkhead. And I'm going to create a drip wall. So this actually screws right in. To this. And what I'm going to do is have hose. This vinyl hose. 
will be attached on either side and come around the sides. And I'll drill holes in it and water will trickle out everywhere, all around the sides. And that's the next step. But uh, these, believe it or not, are actually, you can't find these at Home Depot. Um, there's some places that make them online. I'm, I was lucky I found these. Uh, I have like enough for forever now, but um, some places were selling them for like a dollar, which is fine. But then they wanted like 20 bucks in shipping, which was pretty funny. So I found these on Amazon and uh, they're a half inch. They fit right in, you know, they screw right into the bulkhead. So it's kind of perfect. And, it's, and it doesn't stick out too far, so it's not taking away from the room uh, of the, you know, any, any of the area of the tank, um, you know, for aesthetic reasons. So anyways, um, I will show you uh, next how I'm gonna put the tubes on and how I'm gonna secure those, and we'll go from there. Okay, so at this point, I've got on these vinyl tubes onto this male half inch T, which is screwed into my bulkhead. As you can see, I use some uh, great stuff, pond and foam, um, and also I use silicone, you can't really see it, to make sure that this was uh, in place. I mean, the, the, the vinyl hose is pretty, um, uh, you know, it's hard to bend a little bit, uh, you know, it comes coiled up, so um, I drilled holes, I don't know if you can see, um, some holes there for the drip wall and then actually what I did is I used an existing spray bar from <laughs> this from the the filter the external canister filters the Fluval 207 um, I have about five of them and I have all these spray bars and so the spray bar is actually um, right here and uh, you know, I, I just don't like wasting pieces. I, I kind of only use the pieces of the flu valves and the other canister filters that I need. I don't use spray bars and I don't, I don't have, you know, all the things coming over the top because you need a secure lid when you have a salamander because they're like little Houdinis. They're like escape artists. They just can get out. So, um, so anyways, so this is all set up. Um, it's pretty good. The next step now is to start to make some structures in the tank and the fun stuff and starting to work on the hardscape. So uh, I will be back with that. Hey, so one thing I, I do, which I should mention is, as you can see the tank, I put it vertical on one of its sides. In order to kind of piece together how I want the hardscape, I start on one side. So for this, I'm gonna start on, on this side. So I'll zoom in here. So, there's the where the water is going to come out right and i'm actually going to leave this open here this vinyl so if there's any excess water i don't some people plug it up i have the other side uh plugged up you can't see it because it's upside down but um so maybe make a little waterfall it'll also uh, oxygenate the water a little bit i don't even know how much water is going to be left by the time it gets to this point but i'm going to have to conceal um you know all the the stuff here, all the, the silicone and the vinyl and a crate. So, but what I do is I kind of piece together the rocks, how I want to, you know, with how I want the hardscape to look. And it, it's really just kind of like a, a puzzle. Um, and then I start, what I'll do is I'll actually foam, you know, I'll use this and I'll foam in between. And then I let it dry for about 10 minutes, maybe even less. And then when it's pliable, I'll kind of just like push it back in. It, it el eliminates the amount of carving you need to do. Um, and then in the spaces in between those rocks where there's just the foam, I'm going to put this, this mesh, which allows moss and other things to grow on it. Uh, it wicks water. Um, you can buy this on Amazon. It's like 10 bucks, 15 bucks, something like that. I can't remember, but... Um, it's almost like speaker fabric, to be honest. It's the only thing it kind of reminds me of. There's stuff called um, Hygrolon, and it's expensive, and I can never find it, so I don't use that. Um, but that's what will go in between these pieces, which will be the green in between the rocks. But anyways, um, I'm going to work on this side, and then I will show you when I'm done this side. All right, so several hours later, and a can of Great Stuff Pond and Stone Foam later, expanding foam. We have this side, and we've used some rocks, some other things 
for our hardscape. So as you can see, there are some rocks. Here is the one of the pieces of driftwood I have coming down, which is foamed in. All this black stuff is the foam. And then there's rocks, and then I have a little ledge. It's hard to tell. Um, and I've also created a little waterfall area, which will come out of there. So it's all covered up. There's a hole there. The water will come out, trickle down these rocks, down, down, hit that, and hopefully go down and it'll look cool. What I'm gonna do is in between where all this black stuff is, is I'm gonna put that mesh and I'm gonna plant things like liverworts, um, I have some of those, I have moss. So this will all be filled in. I might put uh, maybe like a little fern or something over there, I don't really know yet. So I'm gonna do the background next, but this is the first side of the hardscape done. As you can see, this is quite a process. It's not, <laughs> it's not necessarily getting a tank and throwing a bunch of crap in it. It's, um, it takes a while, but uh, it's cool. And you also got to think about the way the water flows, which is why I created these little lips here that stick out these thin pieces, these thin rocks. Probably can't really tell it's hard to. There's rocks under there that come out a couple inches, and then these kind of go over top only to hide the uh, the tube. But it'll create a drip effect, and then the rocks, the way I have them, um, it should drip down nicely and, and kind of saturate everything. So uh, now I'm going to do. This background piece here, which is going to take the longest, but I'm going to start on that and then I'll do this side over here. But right now, uh, we're going to do this background and show you how it looks. Okay, so giving an update. So before I showed you how I had hardscaped one side of the enclosure, it was this side over here. At this point, I've actually hardscaped the entire thing. Um, I skipped some of this because it took so long to and I just didn't really feel like filming it. It was just pretty tedious, and even if I put it on um, kind of time-lapse, it would have just taken forever. So I'll just kind of walk through what I did. So hardscaped everything with rocks. As you can see, there's ledges. There's, um, there's a little uh, area down here, which is essentially an egg crate box like this. And it's wrapped with some weed fabric uh, that allows plant growth on top of it and, um, and you know allows water to pass through. Then I foamed over it with great stuff, pond and stone expanding foam. Um, and so there'll be substrate in here um, and I can put um, an aquatic substrate. Just So it's not gonna be dirt, it's gonna be like fluval stratum, fluorite, things like that. Um, and so, yeah, so there's, you know, it looks like, you know, like a little rock, like a rocky outcrop um, with some driftwood foamed and everything is locked into place, by the way. All these pieces of stone are all locked in. Um, and did this side. And then everywhere where there was black expanding foam, I carved as much as I could. Not all of it, like, I'd say like 85, 90% was carved. And what I did was I covered it with this fabric which is like the same fabric used on speakers when you see like a like a big like a speaker that you know emits sound um it's like that same kind of fabric and i super glued it all over everything in between the the hardscape so it covers up you know, as you can see here all where the um the hose the vinyl hose is running you can still kind of see it but um and really what this is is it acts like a medium so plants can grow on it so all super glue in place plants, moss, liverworts, ferns, anything else that I think can actually grow on this stuff uh, that's not gonna need a lot of substrate or really any substrate. Um, and then down here, I'm gonna have some creeping fig vines and some other, maybe like a rabbit foot fern. Not a lot, there's not a lot of room here. I mean, I could barely even get my, my hand in there. Um, but uh, I want this set up to be mainly aquatic, but areas where uh, salamanders can hide. So there's a couple little cracks and crevices here and there, but what I didn't want was an overly large uh, setup for this, where I, you know, where I can't find the salamander like it is right now. Because right now it just, it's just, you know, having a small salamander in a large setup um, is very difficult to find, to feed, and you don't want to let too much food go in there because you don't know what what's going to go to waste, and you know, a lot of things jump in the water. 
um, you know, you don't know it, like a cricket, and it can, you know, you know, it'll die, and, and then um, nitrates will get out, and it's just a pain in the butt. So um, I like to be able to feed them when I feed them, and so I want I wanted something where they could hide, but I, I know where the hiding spots are, and so that's why I'm creating this. Um, I actually use two types of rock. I use this stuff, which is lighter. It's more like a tan, lighter color, and these came out of a, uh, a big stream in the northern part of Maryland where I live. Um, on someone's property, uh, so I was able to take some rocks from there. And then I also use slate gray rocks. Um, I don't know if people like that I kind of mixed it up, but I, I like mixing the rock colors up. As you can see, there's a darker gray, dark gray on this light. Just I think it gives a good contrast. Some people don't like that, um, but I like it. It's, this is gonna be so overgrown anyway, it's gonna be hard to tell after a while, but um, but yeah, that, that's it. I mean, really, the just the next steps is setting up the filter and planting and putting the substrate in so the really fun part but um, I just wanted to kind of walk through what I did and 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 oh and the last thing is with this stuff I mean you know you have to cut pieces and super glue it and you got to wear gloves it's, it's just really kind of a pain in the butt um, but it really works nice once you get it up but it's like you know it's like a it's like a puzzle you know you're basically just piecing these these things together um, until you can come come away with like a kind of like a cohesive uh, you know, fabric, piece of fabric that looks like it's all one piece interwoven between all the cracks, as you can see, just kind of through all the cracks of all the rocks. And so, anyways, we'll see how it goes. I will come back to a video with the planting next. Hey, so I just wanted to talk a little bit about some of the plants that I'm gonna be putting into this new salamander setup I'm doing. Um, so right here, we have a rabbit, rabbit foot fern, as you can see. Uh, it's been pretty green. I've had it for a couple, about a week actually now. And I uh, just let it sit here, get some sunlight. Uh, and I put a creeping fig in. And then um, I've got some moss that I've cleaned that I got on a hike not too long ago. It's pretty green. Um, I think this is pincushion moss. I'm not really sure. There's two kinds in here. But it's nice and moist. It's pretty green. It's growing. I'm going to add that to the wall. And this is actually some other moss. Can't really see it that well that uh, I got from my backyard. <laughs> I've been cleaning it out, it's letting it soak in water. Um, and this is more stuff that is really good for um, growing on the wall that I'm gonna have in the setup. And then in here is some moss I got, some a couple things, um, some more different kinds of moss in here um, that have been growing for a while. And then I've got all these liverworts. And this is really what I like. These things can just take off and overtake the wall, um, which is great. Um, I have to rinse all these out, which is going to be a pain. Um, so anything in this tub, I'm going to have to clean and kind of get all the substrate off and make sure there's not... It's almost impossible to not have a hitchhiker or two. Like, I see little earthworms, and I'm sure mites have gotten in. Everyone is, you know, deathly afraid of mites. I mean, mites are kind of a normal part... <laughs> of substrates, but um, you, know, you can try to get them out um, and just hope that your springtails and isopods will outcompete them. But anyways, um, these these are the plants I'm gonna start with uh, for my new setup here. And I think it'll look pretty good. So um, we'll let you know after I plant it. All right, everybody. So here is the finished product. The mountain spring seepage wall. I basically got the inspiration for this when I was in the Poconos about a month and a half ago for my birthday. Uh, we did a lot of hiking, my wife and I, and I saw a lot of really cool um, natural setups um, where there was like a seepage coming out of the side of a mountain or uh, drip walls with a lot of moss and liverworts growing and, and kind of um, ferns growing through the cracks. So I try to replicate that. Um, I actually took some uh, some of the uh, sandstone and some of the rocks and the, and the river pebbles, you know, in moderation, just a little bit um, from a friend's uh, creek where it looked like a similar, um, you know, kind of habitat here in Maryland. And I came up with this. So um, hopefully you like it. Um, definitely tell me if you don't. I'd love to know, you know, what you think I could have done better. Um, but as you can see, uh, there's a layer of... It's uh, fluorite beneath it, but you can't really see it unless you look at it from far away. I have a lot of these river rocks and pebbles, some botanicals in there. Um, I've got a lot of the driftwood. The, the water's dripping nicely from everywhere. There's a little mini waterfall I built. 
which is coming down, um, as you can see. Pretty nice. I mean, the, I like the way it's dripping. It's aerating the water. Some places the water's dripping more, which I'm fine with, because um, that's naturally kind of what I saw. It wasn't like a perfect drip everywhere. You know, sometimes uh, there was more water and less water in other places. So it is, I think, one of my better setups I've done. Um, the glass gets a little, I've been wiping it off like 20 times so I could take pictures, but um, it's just going to be messy because of it. But the water's dripping nicely everywhere. It's coming down the sides. Um, so yeah, this is the new setup. And I think what I just need to figure out is am I gonna put my red salamander, my pseudo triton ruber in here, or am I going to put some other species in here? But I'm thinking I'm gonna put the red salamander in here because this is the kind of environment where they live. Um, it's similar actually if you go over here to my spring salamander setup, which is also a, a kind of like a mountain creek type of a uh, little bit of flow, drip wall. Uh, there's no flow in this one, but um, but I'm really happy with this one. This is a 20 tall, I've never done it. That's a 20 long, and this is a 20 tall. And I like I like this for this kind of setup because it gives you a lot more room to work with on the walls, which is really where you're designing most. The middle is just kind of like, you know, whatever, but the sides, I mean, really creating the hardscape with the rocks, the outcroppings, as you can see. You got moss growing on that. So it's pretty cool. Well, anyways, hope you like it, and on to the next one.